You are now listening to the Serious Growth Podcast with your host, Leo Costa Jr. Well, here we are again. Welcome to the show. Got a interesting question from one of our inner circle silver backers. By the way, uh, thank you guys for asking questions. It uh, it seems like we're starting to gain some traction. Get more and more people that are responding, asking some really great questions. So keep that up. You know, it's one day at a time. And especially as you get a bit older, us silverbackers, this shit gets different, man. You know, it's it's very painful to go into the gym anyway, but it's a whole different animal when you get up there in age. And the ones that are not up there in age, they don't really understand. You know, when we're younger, we don't know shit. We don't know what we don't know, especially as it relates to uh aging and experience you know we have a quite a few people out there that are uh, as it relates to bodybuilding they're they're book smart and you know the thing about it is and i'm i'm actually thinking about robbie robinson right now robbie robinson was at we we did a seminar together an awesome one which we're taking on the road and he um this guy is so good and such a master at what he does. And mainly it's because two things, at least he's a student of the game. He's not just book smart. There's a lot of book smart people out there. Good for them. But when Robbie's a student of the game, anybody who's been around as long as Robbie has, I'm one of them. And there are many more that are a student of the game they've done it themselves they've tested it on the stage okay over and over and over again for years and years that's a master robbie robinson is able to look at a photo of an individual who's training and he can tell you in a photo what that person needs to do in order to get their body in competition shape readiness if you're just simply someone who has book smarts you don't really know that kind of stuff and you really shouldn't be advising people that are wanting to get on the stage especially bodybuilders that want to get on the stage that uh you know uh national level or up i mean if you're a book smart person and you want to work with somebody who is just trying to get in more fit shape okay maybe try that on them but when you're dealing with people that are competing at, at a especially a higher level you know you might get lucky book smart people but that's all it is it's luck so make no mistake and my grandpa said it best and i think it correlates uh, with bodybuilding he said it takes 10 years at least 10 years for a man and a woman to really know how to love each other and the translation of that for me was because you really got to be around somebody every single day, day in and day out to learn the little things about that relationship. Compare that to bodybuilding. It's a relationship that you have with your own body. And the only way that you're going to going to know exactly how your body works and responds is if you go in every single day like a marriage and you're in the moment every single day day in and day out and like in marriages or any kind of relationship it's a roller coaster especially in the first first 10 years and even after that i can attest to that but when you're day in and day out you start learning things you start learning how to be more efficient in your training how was that different than a relationship with another person? My grandpa was right. You know why? Because he had experience, tried and tested in the trenches, in the trenches, this is that, in the trenches, tried and tested. So think about that. You know, if you're out there talking smack and you don't have eight to ten years 
underneath your belt and you're advising people, uh, you're full of shit. And I don't care what you say. Eight to ten years, at least, compete your, uh, yourself. Go out there and fail miserably so you can understand why. And then start talking some smack. All right, that's my little rant for that part of it. Um, uh, the the question that I got was, do you know when you're training, or do you train emotionally or instinctively slash intuitively? So let's first identify and be clear about the difference between instinct and intuitive. Intuitive is something that is learned from outside sources. And I would say in this case, you book book smart people. Those are you. You're more intuitive than you are instinctive. Again, assuming that you're not in the gym and been around long enough to understand how a body really works. So there's instinct. Instinct is something that is not learned. It's not. This is inside your body. This is where you have to understand. That's a language. Instinct, training instinctively is a language that you have to learn. It's like learning Spanish or Portuguese or any other language. It's a tough one to learn because it's mixed in with emotions. And that's where it gets tricky, especially when it comes to you're, are you in the gym training emotionally or are you training instinctively? Are you able to listen to your body? Do you, do you trust your body enough to where you know that you have to train the same body part maybe five days in a row? And, and that goes against the grain and against popular thinking. Why? Because in most cases, the default is usually you're supposed to let your body, the muscle, rests at least 24 hours, and most people will say longer than that. It depends on what school of thought of training that you're following. So to, to go out and, and train one body part every single day, even twice a day, because you know what? If you know what you're talking about, you understand that your body can recover within, the muscle group can recover within five hours. And so you can actually train the same body part twice a day if you wanted to. How can you do that if you're just book smart? You can't. You can't. You have to be instinctive. And then you have to be able to trust that. It, you're finding your emotions when you're e either training emotionally or instinctively or together because you need both of those together. Now, how do you know if you're emotional in your training? Because you know something? Uh, as far as I'm concerned, going into the gym is like going to war. And, but people, not everybody responds the same way when they go into war. In other words, adversity. People, it's really interesting when people are, are facing some kind of, and I don't think it's much different when I talk about this, when people are facing adversity or tragedy, they, they respond in different ways. So you might say, well, that person, you know, they should be like crying or be more emotional about this tragedy or this adversity and yet they're not very calm and some might think especially the ones that are just book smart some might think that that person isn't emotional there's something missing they're flat and yet at the same time that could very well be and as it relates to going into the gym i'm certainly not saying that you have to go in there and yell and scream and do all that no that doesn't really uh, that in itself doesn't tell me if you're training emotionally or have emotion when you're working out. What I look for is intention, the intent. That tells me almost everything about an individual. So just like a Robbie Robinson who can pick out in a photo what the hell that person needs in order to be in, the, in better shape, the person that really understands in the gym, if you're as a trainer working with a client, because, you know, if you're a really good coach, you, you're uh, reading your client every single day. And because we are an emotional being, your client is not going to be the same every single day. So how do you adjust to that? If you're book smart, you won't. You don't understand that at that level. 
if you're a really good trainer and you're watching your client and paying attention to that emotional being, you have to learn how to get the most out of that person and get them emotional. But more importantly, you have to get them to be intentional when they go into the gym. And now a word from our sponsor. Do you want a bone crushing grip? Good, because you're gonna get one with the amazing new TRS Gripper. It's a progressive grip builder with longer handles and a special ergonomic design that's like a dozen hand grippers in one. Start off easy and work your way up to quickly build your grip strength from wet noodle to pulverizing. The package includes a video from the world famous strength coach, Dr. Russ Horine, the man who worked with Leo Costa to help bring you Big Beyond Belief and the Bulgarian Power Burst. Dr. Horine shows you a simple and easy to follow workout plan that takes just minutes a day right from in front of your TV set if you want. So click on the link below and let's get started building you a stronger, firmer, bone crushing grip. Okay, so let's get back to how do you know when to be instinctive and be emotional? And here's what happens to a lot of people. This is kind of an example. Some people are going to the gym and they're having a bad day. And that bad day is making them emotional. And for those that are not instinctive, or intuitive, they might, they might read that having a bad day, an excuse or reason to go have breakfast instead of, instead of following through, bearing down and going against what you're emotionally feeling. See, that person doesn't, it's not connected to the the language of instinctive if that makes any sense they don't know that just because you're having a bad day just they don't know just because you're having a bad week that maybe you should just carry on instead of leaving the gym or maybe it's time for me to take a break and this is what happens to a lot of people they're just looking for any kind of reason why maybe they shouldn't be in the gym and and gutting it out there were a lot of times throughout my career when i was having a shitty fucking day in the gym but it was more than that my body instinctive language was telling me you are overtrained it, it's okay to take off in this case you have to understand how hard that is and you can't unless you're a seasoned bodybuilder bodybuilders know we have this mindset and we're constantly over overcoming obstacles because that's all weight train or bodybuilding uh, training is is overcoming an obstacle every single fucking day because we walk in fire as mr tom platz has said often but you have to know when to say when, when to say, you know what? My body's trying to communicate with me. And so many times as a, a bodybuilder, we keep overriding those alerts, that language. It's so tricky. You are on the edge of a cliff in this case, to use as a metaphor. It's that close. Because you could be that close to making a phenomenal breakthrough, or you could be that close to crashing. And you guys that have competed out there, and girls the same way, women, if you know that when you're getting ready for a competition, that last week is make or break. You have to be so in tuned with your body. And yet so many bodybuilders aren't. They put their hands in somebody else, like a, a trainer, and that's okay. That's all right. But there's nothing better. Again, I'm going to keep saying it. There's nothing better than firsthand experience. But that last week is make or break. It's the difference between crash landing into a competition versus landing nice and smooth. And I got to tell you this. Along the way, you're having to make a decision. 
that's more cases going against what you think you should be doing. That's where the language of instinctive, that sounds kind of weird, but instinctive language, that language that's communicating with you, that's the one that you really have to pay attention to. Because I will say this as we're wrapping up, I will say this, your instinctive language that's speaking to you will be right more times than not. And you knotheads that are out there that are saying, I'm full of shit, you're probably less than eight years uh, in the in the bodybuilding business and you haven't done it every single day and competed and crashed and burned over and over again, I would challenge that. Anyway, listen, uh, we're going to get going here. I appreciate your your um, comments. I appreciate your questions. Silverbackers, let's go, man. Let's have, uh, you know, the whole idea behind this forum, our inner circle, Silverback inner circle, is to share information. Let's not be like it, it is in these gyms nowadays. You know, very closed. People don't like to share. Let's, uh, you know, back in the uh, when I was in in late 80s, man, the, the environment in the gym was amazing. People shared, they didn't mind sharing their information with you. And I know that when it comes to competing, it's a game of, of inches. And it's again, you know, you want to keep your trade secrets as to how you get in shit. I get that. But if you're really good, that shit shouldn't bother you. Keep sharing information. Let's do this in this silverback in a circle. We need to get a lot of information that's coming from tried and tested principles. And there's a lot of ways to skin a cat into the gym. It's not just one way, but let's talk about that. Let's talk about all the information and, and the experience of what you guys have learned in the gym, as well as nutrition and all that. Let's learn about that stuff because a lot of ways to, there's not just one way to do this. We can all learn from each other. So until next time, Go get some serious growth. Thanks for listening to the Serious Growth Podcast. For more episodes like the one you just listened to, subscribe to us on your mobile podcast app and leave us a review. If you'd like to reach out, you can find us online at SeriousGrowth.com. Until next time, train smart and train hard.